welcome to this new video. In this video I'd like to show you how to build an all band vertical DX antenna for the whole shortwave and how it works and what you need and of course what's so special on this antenna you will know after the intro. Yes, before we start, we have a look um, at which antenna type it is. This antenna is an end fed long wire, and um, um, in the lower part, this end fed long wire is tuned or matched with a um, LC combination, that means with one coil and one capacitor. And the special point is that you can vary the length. That means that you can use um, yeah, a wire with 5 meters or 20 meters or 50 meters. So uh, you have the choice. The choice, And so um, it's nice because you can use, for an example, a spider beam mast and um, yeah, install it on it. Another point is that this antenna is very good at DXing because the radiation angle of this antenna is very flat and that means that the hop distance is very, uh, very um, far. So you have a big reach of your signal. Furthermore, this antenna is um, working for all frequencies or on all frequencies from 1.8 till 30 megahertz. That means from 160 meters till 10 meters. Um, but if you would like to use 80 meters, you have to use a, a, um, a wire length of at least 8 meters because otherwise it wouldn't be very efficient. This antenna is working with 8 meters uh, um, wire length, but um, at 80 meters it's not very effective, but it's, um, it's okay. It's not very good, but it's okay. Yeah, before we start, let's have a look what we need. Yeah, firstly, we need a body for our coil. Uh, therefore, I use this um, yeah, toilet pipe with a diameter of 160 millimeters. And on this toilet pipe, I wind 7 meters of this iron wire or this steel wire. And uh, yeah, totally, I have 15 meters of uh, steel wire and 7 meters of that is for the coil and the rest is used for the radiator. So you have to check your case and then you have to decide what's the best for you. And only as for information you can use this antenna vertically and also horizontally and of course mixed. Moreover we need a capacitor with at least 100 picofarad and um, there's no problem if you use a capacitor with more capacitance, but you have to use a capacitor with at least 100 picofarad. And moreover, we need a hot glue gun to fix the windings on our toilet pipe. Now, of course, I can tell you that it wouldn't be um, very easy to fix the windings on the tube, but the hot glue gun would make it you a bit, little bit easier to keep it in form. If you don't like to do this coil by yourself, because it's so much work, I only can prefer um, this coil. You can see it in the upper left-hand corner. It's a commercial coil. You can uh, buy it in the in at the internet, for example. And yeah, one good point is that it's more stable, mostly, than a self-made coil. And of course, it's um, more handy. Moreover, we need a little bit of this copper wire and a PL plug and also um, a decoupling coil um, wh which we have to install at the input of our antenna and we need a crocodile clamp and a clamp for our um, steel cable. So that's all. Now let's have a look how we have to build it. Here we can see the lower part and that's the upper part and I turned around the antenna to show it you better and this is the lower part here and there you can see I installed the PL plug 
it's a normal PL plug and um, yeah you can see the blue cable here and the blue cable is soldered um, to the outer part of the coaxial cable to the ground and um, yeah here you can see it is connected with this clamp to the um, steel cable and the steel cable is the lower part of the coil so the end of our co coil I use this uh, copper wire because it's a little bit more flexible and it makes me easier to um, install it or connect it with our PL plug. Yeah, this copper wire end we have to connect our ground rod here. Um, it makes uh, it makes us easier to um, twist it there and connect it um, by hand, so we don't need any tools and the ground rod has to be at least 30 centimeters. Here now we can see the uh, red cable. This red cable is connected and soldered with the inner part of our coax cable and you can see I path through it out and here at the end I solder it um, crocodile clamp at the end of this cable and with this um, crocodile clamp we have to search for the best resonance point while we are looking to the, your uh, our analyzer and looking for the best SWR. Here you can see how I wind it um, around um, on this tube and uh, yeah it wasn't very easy to uh, make it very exactly because the um, windings are um, moving around and around and that's why um, I used my hot glue gun to fix um, this um, steel cables a little bit to make it a bit easier. And here you can see I used a little bit more hot glue to fix the cable to make it a little bit more stable. And here too I passed it a, um, a few times through the pipe to um, hold the cable back. And that's the steel wire which is the radiator. And like I said you can use um, a normal and cheap copper wire instead of steel wire. So you have to decide on yourself. There are um, no not big um, differences. The last part of our antenna is this on a capacitor with at least 100 picofarad. This capacitor is a little bit smaller, but it's um, yeah okay for my and suitable for my bands. It depends on the bands you would like to use. Um, if you would like to use all bands, then I prefer a more bigger capacitor than 100 picofarad. And yeah, now let's have a look how we have to connect it with our um, matching coil. For that, I demonstrated with this crocodile clamps, and um, yeah, the other crocodile clamp I will clip on this connector. And yeah, now we take the red cable, for example, and the one part of our capacitor we have to connect at the um, beginning of our radiator so that means at the top of our coil and the black wire um, it means the other part of our capacitor we have to connect to our um, lower part of our coil um, s um, to the ground what I can't prefer is to install the capacitor um, into or during the coil, not in the tube, um, especially during or into the coil, because that would wor worry the um, inductance and would reduce it. And that's not what we want. We would like to have the most possible inductance and so that's why we have to install our capacitor not into the coil. We have to install it a little bit beside it. So there are no borders for your fantasy, you know. Um, the most important thing is that you install your capacitor one part at the end and uh, yeah, one part at the top. 
So in the next video, we will have a look how to adjust this antenna and install it um, and how to find the best resonance point. And for this, we will use this MFJ269 antenna analyzer and we will see on which band this antenna is working. Thank you for watching this video and of course subscribing this my channel and liking this video and I'm looking forward to hearing from you in the comments. So and only as an information in the next video you don't have to speak and understand German. Mm, now it's German of course maybe I will translate it but um, I don't have to I think so because you don't have to understand it. Um, I only show the display of the analyzer so you don't would have problems if you don't understand German. So thanks for watching 73 from Delta Oscar 3 Juliet November.